data has become more valuable than ever, specifically in this age where digital footprint continues to expand and especially with the growth of social media platforms and mobile technology. These advancements can be beneficial, but many bad actors collect and use the personal data of individuals in ways that are unethical, illegal, or may cause harm to them. Flutterwave, which is Africa's leading payments technology company and a leading thought leader on all things digital across the continent, is also at the forefront of data protection and privacy in Nigeria. Flutterwave says the International Data Privacy Week offers it the opportunity to continue to advocate for data poli privacy policies, laws and activities in Nigeria and on the continent. We're now being joined by Abisola Ekbonyu, who is the Data Privacy Compliance Manager at Flutterwave. Great to have you on Newsday. Hi, thank you for having me. It's as a pleasure. Well. Um, you know, I'm just trying to take a little quote here that says it's a day that's been set aside to create awareness of fundamental rights and freedoms relating to the privacy of citizens in the data processing ecosystem. I know it's on the 28th, but it looks like you've made it a week long affair. Just want to ask you, where is Nigeria when it comes to protecting, you know, the rights and freedoms of of um, data privacy? How how far have we come when you look at the progress we've made, probably from last year with the information you have this year? Oh, um, you know, data is really important. It's an integral part of our lives. It's literally everything that you do. Because we are in a modern age, you find that in companies providing service to you, you put data out there and you also have data being obtained from you. I mean, services cannot run without that happening, right? And it's so valuable that it's there's a consciousness that every individual needs to have as it relates to your privacy. And you know, when you think privacy, just think about your personal information, your name, your social security number, your bank verification number, even your IP address. So mm. it is literally any information that can be used to identify you as a person. And I think that um, the efforts of the regulator has been massive and immense in also creating that awareness because it's an evolving concept. Um, there are a lot of people that are still uninformed about their rights on these things. I mean, first, your rights is guaranteed by the Constitution. So on that section 37, your rights to privacy is guaranteed by the Constitution, first of all. And we also have the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation that also seeks to enforce that. And I mean, consequently, would have the Data Protection Act as well when that is enacted. But these are some efforts that um, the regulators have put in place to ensure that people's rights are guaranteed. And when you know your rights, you can easily um, exercise them and seek redress where they're being infringed upon. Now, not everybody is completely aware about the risks, the huge risks of their data being out there. So can you shed some light on why we should keep our data private at a time like this? So um, that's a very interesting question. First of all, um, I see data as something valuable. People call it different things. So some people say it's the new gold, it's the new oil. Think about it like your assets or your bonds and stock. Now, as you provide that data to companies, you expect some level of care that they should um, put in place to protect that information. But every individual still has the responsibility to maintain your privacy. I mean, you can set the controls of what you put out there, and you can also limit how much intrusion people have, right? So I think the first thing is ensuring that you read up policies. And this can be a very lengthy document, and the law um, has been very clear to ensure that when companies have policies up, it's easy to read. So read policies as you're about to sign up for a service, you need to understand what is that company collecting from you, first of all, in terms of data, what are they doing with the information? How is the information moving? Then beyond that, even for your applications, you need to create strong passwords. Sometimes we run out of passwords, uh, and it can be a hassle, but they have to be strong. So maybe make them like 12 characters, make it a mix of like uppercase, lowercase, um, special characters and numbers. And even when you create a strong password, don't replicate it across multiple platforms, because where there's a compromise on one account, you find that I mean, access can be got into every other account that you have. And there's something also called um, two-factor authentication. So I like to liken it to a house. Your, your main gate is like your username and your password. So the 2FA is the extra layer of security that you put. I mean, nobody can gain access to your main house if you do not put in that code. So it could be a code, it could be a security question, it could even be your thumbprint, right? And finally, 
and it's also important to limit the information that you put out on the internet because bad actors are everywhere and you really don't know who is watching. Okay. Um, as a premise, you know, the EFEC has approved the Nigeria Data Protection Bill, even though this is still subject to um, rat ratification and endorsement by the National Assembly. That's on one end. That's the premise to this question. Of course, as individuals, we're supposed to take responsibility. When it comes to the structures or the institutions that are also, uh, you know, involved when it comes to data protection, would you say that it's been there's there's not as much integrity as one should expect. When we see incidents of, you know, someone wakes up and see that four million has departed from my account and I didn't do anything, or you see an expense for for um, based on a purchase you didn't make. So, do you think that the institutions involved when it comes to data protection are also maintaining integrity, or is it just the fault of you know um, those who are users like myself? So I believe that everybody has a role to play when it comes to data privacy. Right? But data is collected so massively that sometimes it's misused, whether intentionally or even unintentionally. Right? So um, every individual, every institution, even you know the government, every body has a role to play when it comes to that. Now for institutions, there are certain things that the law requires you to put in place. You need to have um, governance of your policies, um, management as well, your inf for information security practices also have to be top notch. So um, the long and short of it is that every body has a role to play across board to ensure that privacy is maintained. Whether you're an institution that is obtaining data internally, you're putting in place adequate controls, or you're an individual whose data is being collected as well, you should understand your rights and there are principles as well that the data privacy laws and protection laws across the world impose on organizations so you have like principle of transparency you need to continue to inform your data subjects your users your customers what you're collecting on them what you're doing with that information right and there's minimalization don't collect information that is too excessive or more than you know what you actually need to provide them that service if you need to retain the information for a particular period of time even beyond you know, when you informed your customers or users that you would keep it for, you need to notify them and inform them. So the law has put in place all of these principles to guide organizations on what they need to do as they collect user data. But it still remains a collective responsibility. That's right. And, and thank you for sharing that on a broad spectrum. Now, let's talk about Flutterwave. What exactly is Flutterwave doing to protect the data privacy um, you know, w across its products, its services? Of course, we know you've got such a broad spectrum of uh, consumers of, of the platform. So as a company, we take privacy of our users extremely seriously. There is a dedicated privacy team who um, works with the organization to ensure that um, rights practices are implemented across the company. We have a data protection officer as well who oversees the overall strategy, implementation and enforcement of these policies. And in addition to that, we do not take staff training seriously because it's something you need to do on an ongoing basis. So we continue to train our staff and especially employees that have to handle data on proper data handling processes. We also benchmark our operations against best practices. And from a technology and infrastructure angle, we ensure that we get the right certification. So the PADSS or PIDSS, which is your payment um, card industry data security standards for a company that um, runs payment infrastructures or you have to um, deal with cardholder data in some way or form. You have that and then our ISO certifications. And you need to con we conduct audits as well, internal and external, so that we can identify gaps and proactively fix them because proactivity is really important. So these are some of the things that we do as a company. Oh, you seem to embody that. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, data Privacy Compliance Manager, Bisola Ekbongi. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having Thank me you. as well. <laughs>